Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to the lecture series in bioenergy. So, we are in module uh, 3 on the biofuels. So, in the first lecture, I started uh, with you people about uh, the carbon dioxide fixation and I give you a brief uh, historical sketch. When Malvin Calvin started his research on how carbon dioxide is fixed uh, in the chlorella. So, the first break which he got. So, you remember in the last class in one of the slides I showed, uh, get back to the slide in the previous slide, I showed you this autoradiograph. So, one thing I forgot to tell you in the last class. So, once you get these uh, moieties on the paper chromatography, you put it in the radioactive processing, which is essentially called autoradiograph and that is where you get all those spots. So, those were CO2 got incorporated into organic molecules with radioactive labeled. So, in other word, at in these spots what will you see, you will have carbons with radioactive labels which essentially means that the, these carbons have come from the medium, from the surrounding injected medium into the photosynthetic assembly and got incorporated or may got reduced or form some certain compounds of carbons. Okay. So, what essentially we are seeing here are different compounds of carbon which where the carbon has been radio labeled. So, this stuff what you see out here was done after 60 seconds. Now, at 5 seconds when he froze it by putting the whole complex in alcohol, Calvin observed only one single spot, it was something like this, the autoradiograph you see in that auto radiograph, see at that specific spot there is only one and which he identified as 3 phosphoglycerate. And while I am writing this 3 phosphoglycerate, this will remind you in the very, very first uh, sessions when we talked about photosynthesis, I talked about this 3 phosphoglycerate which is formed. So, 3 phosphoglycerate is a carbon, it is a 3 carbon. Okay. So, what you are having here is something a molecule like this. So, essentially what people started thinking, the very first thought which came to the mind was, so now if the product is 3 carbon and we are starting with a single carbon which is of course like this okay which is coming from single co2 so is it this carbon from co2 is attaching to some two carbon molecule and making a three carbon molecule is it clear to you people think of it so what i get is a molecule 3 phosphoglycerate is three carbons and you started with a one carbon molecule C, CO2 carbon, single carbon, right. So, from 1 to 3, you have only two options, right. So, if this one is coming here, so you already have something which is 2 carbon and this one which is coming here get attached and form a 3 carbon. Simplistic thought, this is how it should work. Interestingly, that is exactly not how it worked to big surprise. So, there was no 2 carbon substrate. So, one more to add up to have a recall back. 
So, you already have the reduction assembly in the form of NADPH which is produced from the photosystem 1. Okay. So, very simplistic and one specific spot telling that it is 3 phosphoglycerate is formed because one carbon coming from carbon dioxide and you have some two carbon molecules something which you do not know. Okay. So, it forms 3, but apparently that was not the story, the story was something else. And that is where it lies, one of the most uh, beautiful uh, journey of Kelvin and the Kelvin cycle, which involved lot of postdocs, lot of researchers, lot of collaborators likewise. And if you read through his uh, Nobel lecture, which in the last class I was kind of built confused, it was in 1961 and that this lecture was delivered on December the 11th, 1961 in Stockholm and <laughs> there he clearly mentioned that this was not something which happened overnight. It was 45, 55, like 15 years of rigorous research, you know, spot by spot figuring out the intensity of the spot, the molecular nature of it and the structure of it. It is a long journey. So, what we will do, I will not go through that journey anyway, I will give you a handout to read through that Nobel lecture, you will get really fascinated by to see how this first, how the so called biofuels in nature is being made, which now we are employing techniques to convert it. But what was found out was interesting, the first acceptor of carbon dioxide is not a 2 carbon compound, instead it is a 5 carbon compound. So, 5 carbon compound, so try to visualize it first, after that I will write down each of the formulae. Okay. That is not important, important is to visualize how nature functions. So, it is a 5 carbon attached to 1 carbon or rather 1 carbon attached to 5 carbons. So, it makes a 6 carbon C6. Then through a series of process, this 6 carbon gets split into 3, 3. Now, revert back, get that clock back to yourself. So, what you talked about? 3 phosphoglycerate, right? 3 carbon. So, 1 carbon coming from carbon dioxide, 5 carbon coming from that XYZ molecule. They add up together, it is kind of a condensation or you know adding together and make it. 6 carbon, that 6 carbon now get split up into 3, 3, 3 molecule of phosphoglycerate. How that happen and who made it happen? The enzyme which made it happen was one of the most abundant enzyme and which is, so let me just write it down what I just talked to you people, so that it kind of engraved. So, the first thing was a C5. Okay. On the C5, I am not identifying the molecule at this stage, you are adding the CO2 or your carbon dioxide. Okay. This makes it C6. From the C6, you are making a C3 plus C3 and this whole thing happens in the presence of or is being orchestrated by an enzyme called Rubisco, whose full form is ribulose 1, 5 bis phosphate Carboxylase and oxygenase, and we will come to that why I am mentioning it like that. Carboxylase slash oxygenase. This is one of those enzymes which is located on the, and if you know the location, if you remember the structure, it is located on the stromal section.
of thylakoid membrane. We will little later we will talk more about it. So, now the main question which must have been bothering you what is that C 5 molecule what we are talking about. So, now what we will do we will talk about that C 5 molecule or the very first carbon dioxide acceptor and remember it we still have not talked about the NADPH which will come later and we will move slowly because this cycle just the way you have understood the light cycle is very essential that it, 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 it engraved in your mind map exactly how each one of these reactions are taking place and they are some of the most beautiful reactions. Okay? So, to start off with the C 5 what is that C 5 molecule is? So, C 5 is essentially a molecule called ribulose 1 5 bisphosphate. How this molecule looks like? So, this is the name of the molecule and the molecule looks like this C H 2 O P O 3 2 minus you have ketone group out here C O H you have hydrogen here you have another O H group on this side hydrogen on this side and you have C H C H 2 O P O 3 2 minus. So, let us number them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, this is that first substrate which is the starting point of accepting carbon. So, ruling out all speculations. So, if you remember where we started this journey. So, I will show you that very in the previous class I told you that it could be possible like this there are a lot of carbon dioxides coming in and forming carbohydrate. Then we talked about in today's class we started off with this reaction possibly carbon dioxide coming and attaching to a 2 carbon and making a 3 carbon. Then we moved on to deciphering it and this process was not easy just imagine from all those spots figuring out possibly which one is the first one and this all went back to the process of freezing the moment by putting it in alcohol you just froze that moment hold that moment and doing a paper chromatography then autoradiography it's a long drawn process of step by step to figure out the process. So, you have ribulose 1,5 bisphosphate, ribulose 1,5 bisphosphate under the action of the enzyme which you have already talked about action of rubisco makes there is a modification which happens in it which is called the enendiol complex which is called enendiol intermediate or enediol complex so enediol is essentially your ch2 o p o 3 2 minus then you have c o h so here you see and then here is a change there is a double bond which got introduced out here. I am just highlighting for your understanding what is the difference. There is a double bond which is coming, and then you have is C H O H, then C H 3 O P O 3 2 minus. Okay. So, this is the enidiol intermediate. I will talk about you, talk about this later how this enzyme acts on it. Now, out here after this is where CO 2 is adding as of now there is no addition of CO 2. Okay. CO 2 is adding and 
there is a proton which is formed. So, now we will talk about after this CO2 addition how the molecule looks like. Okay. So, after this CO2 addition, so I am picking up the reaction from there, what you see CH2 O P O 3 2 minus, okay. then you have C O H and this is where C O O minus this is CO2 coming through and C ketone group again the OH H and C H 2 O P O 3 2 minus sorry 2 plus ok. So, this intermediate this after the addition this is called 2 prime carboxy 3 keto is a carboxy group you could see that at 2 prime carboxy 3 keto. So, 3 keto when you talk about this is the 3 keto group and here you have the carboxy group ok. Here is the keto group D Arabini tall 1, 5. So, these are the phosphate coming through 1 and 5. So, your numbering is going like this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. So, that is why you see the 3 keto, which over we number it. Okay. 1, 5 base phosphate. this is after the addition of CO2 to this 5 chim. So, now what you have if you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and there is a 6 carbon, 6 carbon. So, from 5 we move on to 5 carbon to 6 carbon. So, this was the next development. Now, at this stage there is a hydrolysis taking place. Okay. So, there is a water molecule which is added in the beginning. I did not explain why that water molecule is coming in the beginning, you must have seen. Now, I am explaining it. So, there is an hydrolysis reaction taking place and a hydrolysis reaction leads to this following product. What you have is CH 2 O P O 3 2 minus sorry 2 minus F C C O O carboxylate carboxylic group out there. Then you have OH, OH. Now, you could see the change, the ketone group is no more there and here for those who are unable to follow, look at here and compare it with here. You will see the difference, okay. just compare it. So, this is the change which is taking place after the hydrolysis reaction, then you have the OH, you have the H standard and then you have again the CH 2 O P O 3 2 minus. So, this is your hydrated intermediate and followed by once you get this hydrated intermediate, this hydrated intermediate which is again a 6 carbon Now, this 6 carbon gets split up into 2 carbon product and the products are like this. What you have is a carbon ion which is C the minus out there C H 2 O P O 3 2 minus and a OH and the other product. So, this is one product which is formed, the other product which is formed, this is after the hydrated intermediate getting dissociated into two 3 carbon compounds is this O P O 3 2 minus. So, this is your 3 
phosphoglycerate. Whereas, this molecule further after addition of an another proton. So, you remember there are a lot of protons which played a critical role. So, this form the same thing O PO 3 2 minus C O H H and C O O another 3. So, the carbon ion forms 3 phospho glycerate. So, what you see out here if you label them in blue 1 carbon, second carbon, third carbon, here 1 carbon, second carbon, third carbon. So, you have a C 5 plus C forming a C 6 and then splitting up into C 3, C 3. So, the last reaction what I just now drew in front of you a C 5 plus C O 2 and then forming a C 6 and then splitting up into two compound of C 3, C 3. So, this is the core initial reaction where C O 2 gets accepted. So, contrary to all the beliefs earlier of C O 2 is adding together forming carbohydrates or C O 2 adding to 2 carbon making a 3 carbon. Contrary to all the belief, Kelvin showed that it is a 5 carbon attaching to a another carbon from carbon dioxide and converting it into a 6 carbon moiety and that 6 carbon form 3 phosphoglycerate. And how this 3 phosphoglycerate, so in the in the process the enzyme which got involved was an enzyme called Rubisco. So, Rubisco is a very very interesting enzyme. We will talk in the next class in detail about Rubisco, but just give you an idea it is also called carboxylase because it is adding carbon dioxide it is also called oxygenase it reacts with oxygen. So, in other words or not it reacts with oxygen it promotes the reaction of oxygen after binding to it. So, in a way the Rubisco is a very peculiar uh, enzyme which assist in oxygenation as well as carbon dioxide addition. And what is the implications of it, how it really act. So, in the next class what we will do, we will talk about the basic mechanism and then we will talk about it is Rubisco's other side the oxygenation and what it leads to the photorespiration which is kind of the beginning of understanding C 3 and C 4. And then in the meantime what we will do, we will talk about how these phosphoglycerates are fed into the Kelvin cycle to make the car other carbohydrate moieties. Okay. So, I will close in here and we will pick up our discussion from this point on since now we have finished our journey of essentially what we have done today is if I had to summarize it. So, this will fall under CO 2 reacts with ribulose 1 5 bisphosphate to form 2 molecules of 3 phospho glycerate. Under the influence of or it is being carried out by Ru Bisco. So, in the next class we will initiate our journey with the structure of Rubisco and how the Rubisco carries out this reaction and what are the drawbacks Rubisco have 
and what are the current research on Rubisco. And then from there we will move on to the Calvin cycle. This is the first part of it. We have a complete cyclic reaction which happens after this and still we have not, please keep tab, we still we have not talked about where NADPH is coming to play because NADPH is still the product which is coming from the coming from the photosystem system 1 from the light reaction. Okay. So, now we have taken care. So, if I had to do a kind of in a economics then this is what all we have done as of now CO2. So, now we know where CO2 is binding. We have talked about H2O. We have talked about now CH2ON plus oxygen. So, we have talked about this reaction earlier and today we have initiated in last two classes this part of the reaction and we have first thing what we have kind of learned together is the 5 carbon acceptor of CO2 making it 6 carbon and then splitting up into 3 carbon and 3 carbon and how these 3 carbons and still as I was trying to tell you, we have not accounted for NADPH and ATP. What are their uses and how they are clubbing in out here. Okay. So, I will close in here. Thank you and we will follow up in the next class.